Today we're going to be talking about using SUVAC to work on problems that are moving vertically. Um, SUVAC is specification point number nine, and we are working towards 15, which is the independence of vertical and horizontal motion with projectiles. Projectiles is a topic that gives everybody trouble. So we're going to take this one step at a time and start thinking about vertical motion first, and then we'll move on to putting horizontal motion, which we've dealt with um, SUVAT before, we'll put the two together. So if we're going to use SUVAT for objects that fall, first thing and most important thing is that we have to understand that when objects are moving vertically, they are constantly accelerating. They are accelerating because of gravitational force. Now, of course, gravitational force is given the value 9.81 meters per second squared or newtons per kilogram. Is this positive or negative? This is super important. Conventionally, any acceleration that is to the right or down is positive. And because obviously gravitational force is always downwards, we say, okay, G is positive. What you have to remember then is that any speed upwards has got to be given a negative number. And we're going to work through an example to show you this in real time. So for example, a ball is thrown vertically upwards at 22 meters per second. What is its velocity after two seconds and after four seconds? If we imagine this, we've got the person's hand and they throw the ball. The instant they release the ball, it is traveling up at 22.3 and then it comes back down again. Now, I've drawn the motion next to each other like this. We can assume that they just go vertically up and come vertically down. Okay, so we know it's 22.3 meters per second up. And we want its velocity after two and four seconds. So let's write out our little SUVAT here. We are not interested in S. Our V is minus 22.3. Because, like I just said to you, if it's upwards, if it's a velocity upwards, then it's got to be negative because acceleration downwards is positive. We don't know V, that's what we're after. We know that A is 9.81 because this object is accelerating under gravity, because it is moving up and coming back down again. And we know that our T is going to be first two seconds and then four seconds. And we want V. So the most obvious SUVAT equation is V is equal to U plus AT. That's going to be minus 22.3 plus 9.81 on 2. Let's do 2 seconds first. And that's going to give us minus 2.68 meters per second. Let's just take a moment to think about this. Obviously, it is lower than the starting speed because gravitational force is going to be pulling down on this object as it goes upwards, therefore slowing it down. Um, and it's still minus. So that means that the, it's still an upward velocity. And we'll come back to that in a moment when we look at our second one. So let's go do the same calculation. And this time for four seconds, minus 22.3 plus 9.81 on four. If you do the calculation, you will see that we get plus 16.94 meters per second. Okay, we've now ended up with a plus. So that means that for at two seconds, it was still somewhere along here. It was still moving upwards with a, an upward velocity. Whereas here, it's somewhere down along there. It has turned around this corner and it started coming back down again because now it has a positive velocity, it has a downwards velocity. Let's now think about the calculation. What is its displacement at these times? So again, we'll write out our SUVAT here. We know it's minus 22.3 meters per second.
our initial or the velocity for our first calculation was minus 2.68. Make sure you get your signs absolutely right here. And the second one was 16.94. A is still the same, and our T is 2 seconds and 4 seconds. Okay, we're going to use the equation S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. I'm going to calculate it. You put in the values and check that you get the same answers as me at the end. You can pause the video and come back. Okay, so these numbers, when we look at them at first, they might not actually mean very much to us. But let's just have a think. At two seconds, so our top one here is two seconds. At two seconds, it had displacement from the hand of minus 24.98 meters. Now remember, that minus means it, it's a displacement upwards. So again, because we're talking about vector quantities here, and we've said that positive is downwards, any negative is going to be upwards. So the ball travels up, and in two seconds, it's almost 25 meters from the hand. At four seconds, it's minus 10.72 meters, so it's actually closer to the hand than it was at two seconds, which bears out what we were saying about the motion earlier on. It's, we know that the velocity at 4 seconds is now positive, and therefore what's happened is it's done its reversal of direction at the top, and it's on its way back down again. Just out of curiosity, let's calculate what the maximum height would be for this ball. Now, we know at the maximum height we're going to have a V of zero. This is a very important point here, and there's a reason why I'm doing this. We're going to be using this in the next lesson. We know that V is zero because it, as it goes up, it's going to stop momentarily before it comes back down again. So if we say V squared equals U squared plus 2AS, we can say zero is equal to minus 22.3 squared plus 2 on 9.81 s. That means that 0 is equal to 2, giving us an s of minus 25.35 meters. And so you can see after two seconds it was actually very close to the top. It only took slightly more than two seconds for it to go all the way up to its momentary stop before it started to come back down again. We are going to be using this principle when we talk about projectiles, because projectiles takes vertical motion and horizontal motion, and you have to put the two together, but you treat them independently at the same time. And I will go through it in detail in the next lesson.